custom elements in React from scratch now on Blue Collar Coder. So you've got a cool React component, but you want to be able to use it in non-React contexts, like a page that only uses vanilla JS or one that's written in Vue. So what do you do? Well, you wrap it in a custom element. That's what you do. Now this video assumes that you know what custom elements are and the Shadow DOM is. If you don't know those, then feel free to check out my four-part introductory series on web components, because web components encapsulate three technologies, custom elements, the shadow DOM, and templates, and those videos go through all of those. All right, back to the action. We have here a stateless component that displays a table of data with a title, and a footer spot where any child tags go. And already I've jumped the gun a little, because where you would normally see children referenced in a React component, I put a slot tag. And that's how custom elements define where transcluded tags, meaning child tags, are placed within the element. Okay, but this video isn't about custom element template syntax. It's about wrapping a component as a custom element without using a library. So let's go do that. First off, I'm going to go to index.js and tear out most of the React DOM stuff. Next, I'm going to create a new class called myElement that descends from HTML element. And I'm going to register that class using custom elements register. Cool. Next step, we need to render this thing. Let's create a connected callback method that's called when the element is added to the DOM. And for the moment, I'm just going to put in a test string in there for the title. Now what this does is use the React DOM to render the component into this element. So now let's head over to the index.html and add that tag to the page. Now let's have a look at the browser. And yeah, it's coming up, that's good. So the next thing we need to do is be good citizens of the web world and unmount the component on the disconnected callback. Now with that done, how do I set the title of this thing with an attribute? The first thing I'm going to do is create a static function called observed attributes. It returns an array of attributes that I want to watch with just the title listed in there. Next, I want to pass the title to the component. So first I'm going to move the rendering out into its own render method and call that from connected callback. The reason I'm doing that is because we're going to call it from different places in this class. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is gather up those attributes and pass them on to the React component. So let's go and add some code into that render method. Now let's head back to index.html and add a title. And check that in the browser. Very cool. One more thing though, we have to add an attribute change callback to call render whenever an attribute changes. Now before you freak out and say, hey, won't this be making multiple copies of the component anytime something changes? Nope. Since React 15, the render function has smartly reused and updated existing components, so not to worry. Also, let's check that slot functionality while we're at it. And that's not working because we're not seeing the child div displayed in the custom element. So here's why. We don't have a shadow DOM, and that's required to support slot tags. So let's fix that by adding one and then rendering into the shadow root instead of just to the tag itself. We do need to first check if we have a shadow root though, because attribute changed callback can be called before connected callback. Okay, now that works. Cool. And we get all the benefits of shadow DOM isolation as well. Now the last thing to cover on attributes is that they always should be mirrored by a property that is accessible via JavaScript, so let's go add that.
and then a little test code with a button at the bottom of the page. Cool, that works just great. So let's talk about attributes and properties for just a second. You should use attributes for simple values like strings, numbers, dates encoded as a string, that kind of thing. For complex data types, like our data table and the component, which is an array, you should only use properties. A good way to think about that is to ask yourself a question. What would I expect from a complex W3C specified component, like, like video? And then plan out what's a property and what's an attribute accordingly. For example, you'll never see a JSON encoded attribute. So, not that I know of at least, so don't do that. So next, let's write some code to support the data property for the table, which is an array. So we're gonna create a constructor where we initialize the property value, then a getter, a setter, and then we're gonna update the render method. Cool, let's go add some test code. And now it supports data table as a property, cool. One more thing on the API side, let's add a method, say clear to clear the table. And then we'll call that from index.html. Cool, so that works. And that should do it for the input side of the house. Now, what about events? How do I get events out of this thing? Well, let's add a button to the component which emits a custom event and a listener on the web page. Let's give that a go and nothing happens. Okay, first let's see if we're even getting an event. And we are, so what we need to do is add the composed flag to the event. And now everything should work, and it does. The composed flag allows the event to pass through the shadow DOM boundary. Just as a side note, sometimes you won't get that event because of React's synthetic event system. If that happens, there's a library called React Shadow DOM Retarget Events that'll fix that. Love those long names. Now at this point, we've created a custom element, so good for us. But one more thing before we wrap up on the coding side. Thus far, we've wrapped a stateless component, but let's say you have the craziest of all things, a stateful React component. Not to worry, my friend. React DOM .render returns a reference to the component, so let's go store that. And now you can use the reference property to call methods or do whatever you want on your stateful component. On to packaging. Create React App is packaging our bundle in a way that's mm, not so easy to consume. Let's look at the network tab. That's a lot of JS files. So let's eject from create React App and alter the webpack config so we remove the optimizations that create the multiple files in the first place. And we have it. This is a React app exported as a single JS file that defines a custom element. So word of the wise, this bundle is big, like too big to be practical for doing like a large number of these custom elements, since each would have its own copy of React. So what you're gonna wanna do is externalize React. I'm not gonna go into that here, but basically it means that the host page loads React and puts it on window or some other shared place. And then you can tell Webpack to go looking for it there so that you don't have each custom element bundle include React. And if you bring in any other big stuff like Lodash, Redux, whatever, you're gonna probably wanna do that with that too. So to finish up, this is how you wrap a React component as a custom element from scratch. In another video on this topic, I'll show you how to use a library I wrote to do this all for you in just one function. So be sure to check that out. In the meantime, as always, please like or subscribe if you're digging these videos. See you next time on Blue Collar Coder. Be kind to each other.